Hello, this is Sara Cruz of Go Walks Portugal, and here I am for another tips and tricks about Portugal. Today, it will be all about traveling by train in Portugal. Boop, boop! All right, so the first thing you need to know about the trains in Portugal is that we have a national train system and you can find information about that on their website www.cp.pt Comboios de Portugal and they also have an app available for download to your cell phone and there's not a lot of practical information about the trains and their routes over there but it's very practical for people who are looking forward to schedule their trips while they are in Portugal. You can also find information about discounts there, so seniors have discounts Younger people also have discounts and uh, they have also discounts for people who schedule the trips in advance, especially if you schedule them um, five to eight days before the trip, you can have discounts up to 65%, which is quite good. It is important to assure you that it's really, really safe to travel by train in Portugal. Trains are usually clean, they have toilets available that are also clean, and they usually run on time, with exception for times of strike. In Portugal, it is allowed for workers to strike and if they feel like their working conditions are not good enough, they can schedule a strike, but usually that's scheduled in advance. So you can learn about this while you are traveling and uh, reschedule your trips if needed or at least count on a suppression of a few schedules during the day. You don't need to buy the tickets at the train station, you can buy the tickets online through their website www.cp.pt or you can buy them through their app. Another thing you should know is that train stations are also usually quite comfortable. Actually, the main train stations always have cafes and if the cafes are closed, if it's at night, for instance, you can find plenty of snack machines, so you can have water, a snack or a coffee. Also, you will find Wi-Fi areas and chargers around the stations and the same thing goes for the trains. The main train stations have lockers available, for example, in Coimbra for a long time we didn't have lockers, but fortunately last year they've made them available and they're quite inexpensive. So although I suggest that you come here and stay here for a couple of nights so you can learn a little bit more about the city, you can actually leave your uh, bags at the train station if you are traveling, for example, between Lisbon and Porto, which is a very common thing for travel. So you can easily leave the luggage at the train station and then you will have an area of taxis and also of buses that connect to the city center so you can easily travel within the city as well. Other things that you can count on on train stations are parking lots for cars and parking areas for bicycles. And speaking about bicycles, it is actually uh, possible to carry a bicycle with you in the train. They have specific rules for that that you can find on their website under useful information. And over there they have different rules for the different trains, but you can carry your bike, which is quite good for people that are traveling around and want to be very eco-friendly. You can easily find connections to other buses and also subways. For example, when you arrive at the airport of Lisbon or of the one of Porto, you have a direct connection to their subway system and the subway will take you pretty much everywhere. 
Now, one thing that you should take in consideration is that we have three kinds of trains. We have the urban trains, which are trains that stop everywhere. <laughs> so they may take a little longer to get to places and they are the most common, for example, if you are searching for a connection to an area within the countryside or a little bit more to the east of Portugal, because the west is quite well supplied with the two other types of trains that I mentioned mentioning after, which are the intercidades, the intercity train. The main uh, cities of reference are Lisboa, Lisbon, Coimbra, my hometown, and Porto. Uh, but you have intercities connecting with other main cities of uh, Portugal, so you should check that out on their website as well. And then you have the Alpha Pendular system. That is the most expensive system, but just for you to have an idea, an Alpha Pendular trip between my hometown Coimbra and Lisbon, which is about 200 kilometers of distance, is about 24 euros per person. And that is touristic class. If you want to go in first class, it will be a little bit more expensive but I really never felt the need of buying the um, first-class ticket. Um, I don't think that it's that different from the second class, um, but you will have a little bit more space between seats and you will be closer to their bar. So if you want to drink or eat something, if you're uh, not prepared uh, to do so with snacks on your pocket, you can actually go there uh, pretty easily, but it's really comfortable and uh, very good to travel in second class. So if you don't want to spend the extra money, don't worry, you'll be fine. I just have a little tip about the Alpha Pendular trains. They are very fast and if you get motion sickness, you should search for a seat. Uh, where you are not backwards to the movement. So if the train is moving straight ahead to the south, you should find a seat that is headed south um, and be aware of that when you schedule the tickets online or if you buy them in the ticket office, tell them uh, about that uh, so you don't get motion sickness and it doesn't ruin your uh, trip around Portugal. <laughs> there is another kind of train that we have, which is the international train. So we have trains connecting with Spain. You have a train that goes all the way to Vigo, but also we have a night train to Madrid that is an hotel train. So you have normal seats where you can go and I already tried that and it was quite comfortable. Uh, but if you don't want to go in normal seats, you can also schedule a bed and you can go very comfortable uh, during the night. You Usually the train leaves from Lisbon, it passes by Coimbra and it stops in other areas. Um, but as you go, uh, you will find that uh, you will get very quickly to Madrid. You will arrive there around 6 a.m. And that gives you enough time to explore the city or do whatever you want to do over there. I went there um, because of work, but it's also a great way to discover Europe. So you can connect then from there to France and other countries around Europe. So if you are thinking about doing an interrail, it's something that you should consider starting in Portugal and then why not traveling around Europe? If you want to also do an intra-rail or a rail within Portugal, there are certain passes for that. So there is an intra-rail and also a Portugal rail pass, which are passes with unlimited journeys between three and seven days. And that's a great thing for you to use if you are just looking forward to get to know Portugal traveling by train. One thing that I learned about when I was doing some research on the Comboios de Portugal website is that they've made available many different theme routes throughout the country in different times of year. So if you are curious about them, go check them out. The ones that I would uh, suggest are um, the historical train through the Douro Valley, 
Then we have one which is a cherry blossom circuit, really, really beautiful. We also have the Volga historical train and the almond blossom circuit. Those are top-notch trips. Then they have very useful information about festivities and pilgrimages as well. So they have a calendar that tells you which ones are happening close to train stations. And if you're around Portugal during a specific festivity, you should check that out and go participate in one of those. Other information that they have, and I found it uh, very useful, was about tastes and cuisine. So they have a few routes connected with gastronomy and wine as well. They did partnership with local entrepreneurs. So you get to the train station, you go to the place where they are taking that activity, and then they have a guide or someone responsible for the activity waiting for you over there. And that's something for you to do if you are already in Portugal and want to leave a different day. Comboios de Portugal also did partnership with some associations that organize concerts and festivals in Portugal. So they have some information on their website about concerts. You should check that out as well. All right, and I hope that this inspired you to come to Portugal, travel around and use the train, be very eco-friendly while you travel around here. If you want to get a little bit more inspiration, just go to their website. They have an area for a virtual journey. It's basically a virtual tour. Uh, they uh, basically recreate a tour in the train. So you can see the line, you can see the landscape around and you can feel inspired about coming over here. I hope you enjoyed this video, that it was useful. If you did, just give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below and subscribe to the channel, obviously, because there will be many more videos of tips and tricks and other videos coming up very soon, at least twice a week. And it's all about my beautiful country, Portugal. Okay, see you soon. Bye!